The topic is on prayer and meditation. What is prayer? We all know that prayer is an active communication with God. And since he is our Heavenly Father and we are his children, it is a relational communication with God. Do we have to pray? In 1 Thessalonians 5, it is written, Pray without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. This suggests to us that praying is something that God wants as an ongoing contact with Him during all times, good and not so good times. So let us, during the good times, praise Him, and the not so good times, the hard times, let us pray even more earnestly, because even those times are sent by God so that we can stay in touch with God just as he wants it without ceasing. The disciples did not ask Jesus to teach them to perform miracles or for them to preach. But in Luke 11, we see that they asked Jesus to teach them to pray. Why? Because they have themselves seen Jesus retreat to quiet places many times to pray to seek guidance, wisdom and strength from his father. They realized its significance that praying was Jesus' life, lifeline and connection to the Heavenly Father, that it helped him to prepare for battles he was going to face, and that through prayer, God's desires and directions were made known or revealed to him. So if even Jesus, who was pure and sinless and holy, found the time to stay in touch with his Heavenly Father, how much more should we sinners pray and emulate him? There are several records of Jesus praying in the Gospels that can serve as an example to us. In Luke 3.21, when, when John baptized Jesus, it says he prayed and the heavens opened up. So we, do, we too need to pray on special occasions. Jesus prayed in Luke 6 again. He prayed all night when he was going to choose his 12 closest disciples. It shows that we also must pray earnestly during or before big decision-making times. We see that Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane at the Mount of Ol foot of the Mount of Olives. It is one of his most heartfelt and desperate prayers. He knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. And being in anguish, he prayed even more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground shows that we have to pray very hard in desperate times of need. Jesus prayed three times while he was dying on the cross. First in grief, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then he prayed for those who were hurting him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And in the end, he uttered a word of prayer and total surrender of himself into his father's hands. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It shows us that we have to pay, pray in times of pain and for those who are hurting us and doing us wrong and in times of complete surrender. And one final and, and the final one especially for us during our Lenten season, Jesus prayed while he fasted during the 40 days when he was tempted by Satan in the desert. This tells us that we are to pray against temptation that will displease God and in our demanding phases of life. Hope this all serves as an example and inspiration for us to make prayer an important part of our daily lives too. When Jesus prayed, he prayed to his Father. When we pray, we pray to our Father like he taught in the Lord's Prayer to the disciples. It is also written, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. So the instructions are very clear to us. Our role is very clear. We have to ask and seek and knock to release what God has in store for us. God is all-knowing. Is anything too hard for the Lord? God had asked Sarah in Genesis. But just because he knows it all and there is nothing impossible for God does not mean that he will always act on something. Some things he will not act until there is this communication between him and us. It is very similar to the receiver box or for the TV at our homes. The paid for channels are ready and waiting in the box. But until we press the channels on the remote, we cannot enjoy the program on the screen. So it is with prayer. 
when God, what God has planned for us, can sometimes only be released by our connection to Him through our prayer. Prayer during Lent should focus on asking for God's mercy, grace and compassion as we seek His repentance and forgiveness for our sins and temptations and also for strength to stay away from them. Repentance is the master key to repairing and fixing the gap that we have created with God because of our sin. Sin is a violation to God because He is sinless, righteous and perfect. Just like we don't like garbage close to us, God does not like sin anywhere close to Him because of His sinless and holy nature. True fellowship with God is lost with our sins because Satan enters that gap and he takes residence created by us in our fellowship with God. So repenting and crying out to God to forgive us will help seal this gap created by our sin. Sin has to be addressed before we can ask anything of Him in prayer. Lent is the perfect time to practice and develop a lifestyle of repentance. In fact, there are two ready-made lines in the Lord's Prayer that we can specifically focus on during this time. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. So there is a condition before our sins can be forgiven and that is for us to forgive those who have trespassed against us. We can get closer to God and the door to our blessings can only be fully opened when it involves forgiving others who have done us wrong. Repenting and asking for forgiveness should also mean a commitment to stay away from temptations. Meditation in the Christian sense is the act of becoming mindful and aware of God's presence in our consciousness for a deeper connection to Him. Because of its nature and unlike prayer, meditation happens during a set time specifically to be present and focused <clears throat> on God, to listen to His voice. It is a deliberate act to seek a better understanding through divine intervention just like it takes an investment of time to better understand someone in a relationship practicing meditation can help strengthen our relationship with our father in heaven and allow us to gain a better understanding of his ways and his heart meditation really is one of the best investments that we can put into one of the most important relationships of our life with our lord jesus christ who died for us on the cross so prayer and meditation are complementary prayer is more talking and meditation is more listening. Try, let us all try to listen as much as we talk to God. Let us practice sensing Him in our life alongside prayer. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on us, a sinner, is a good start to begin our journey of daily prayer with meditation during this Lent. God is with us all the time. We can talk to Him anytime and for any length of time. Meditation will help strengthen this awareness and we can live a more humble and meaningful life for His glory. May the Lord bless us all during this holy season and may His Spirit move us to be more like Him.